This week, we will study three based methods. Three based method or three method is very nice algorithm in terms of the representability or explainability. So basically, we can very easily explain our decisions using the decision tree obtained from three methods. So basically, the tree-based method recursively uh, split your input space using some binary decision. So recursive binary splitting is a basic philosophy of tree-based method. For instance, if you have two input predictors, x1 and x2, from the entire input space or input predictors, at each iteration you introduce one binary decision, like uh, whether x1 is less than or equal to t1 or not. So this is uh, true, this is uh, false. This is the first decision, and then uh, make uh, some function value here and here. So basically, at each time you increase one more regime, you can choose your output. And next iteration, you can add one more binary partition for one of area or regime. In this case, let's say we want to introduce one additional binary condition like S2 x2 less than or equal to t2 and based on this you can uh, decide whether your input predictor x1 comma x2 belong to this area or this area so at each time you increase one more uh, increase the number of resin or uh, increase the number of area and with very simple binary test <clears throat> so basically, the function value can be uh, represented with a tree. So in this case, you have two conditions, so two inner state or two uh, branches. So at the beginning, you just test x1 and check whether x1 less than or equal to t1 or not. So if this is true, if this is not, if this is true, uh, you have another condition second condition or second test x2 less than or equal to t2 or not and if this is yes uh, this belong to the area one if this is not true your decision based on the output of area two and if the your input x1 does not satisfy the first condition then your decision based on the third area and you assign some function value for each area so this is f1 value this is f2 value this is f3 value so basically fx is equal to f1 if your x belong to area 1 this is equal to f2 if x belong to area 2 this is f3 if x x belong to area 3 So for uh, obtaining the tree, we have to decide the conditions. Which predictor we want to test, we have to decide the threshold t1 and t2 at each time. And also we have to decide the function value for each resume or each area as well. So this is the learning of tree. Okay, so how to how to find the nice tree. Basic method is greedy approach. Greedy approach just is very myoptic approach. So at each time you just think the one step ahead. Okay, so you just focus on just one additional condition and how much gain we can obtain from the one additional condition and one additional function value. Okay, so at each time, you can define a loss function, for instance, for regression task using 
um, this is uh, x i belong to l m l m square this is one over the cardinality of l m i x i belong to l m x i okay so what is the meaning is after t step after t capital t number of uh, iterations you have capital t number of conditions right after capital t minus one iteration you have capital t minus one condition and t terminal node or t area okay let's say uh, let's assume you already perform t minus one iteration so you have capital t number of area different areas okay then you can assess the quality of current tree using some loss function loss function of course rss value for a regression task okay so this is very natural selection right okay so once you have a uh, capital t number of different area then each area will have disjoint subset of your training data right this is r1 through r capital t each set indicate the the subset of your total training data point and the subset belong to each area so here this this number indicate the the area index and r1 r2 each r a subset indicate the subset belong to one each area and then ri and rj uh, they disjoint okay. okay right so let's assume you already uh, performed t minus one iteration and you have capital t number area in that case the best decision for each area is just average okay so this is very easy to check so you can uh, very easily verify uh, this argument if you have uh, rss residual sum of square root function and you have to decide one single value for one area then the best decision is the average just taking the average of your input data point that's it so this is the value Oh, sorry this is this is why okay all right so in the greedy approach you test all possible one more addition or one more condition so that from the r1 through rt you will have r prime one to r prime capital t plus one reuse the same capital t minus one binary condition and add one more single binary condition that you have r prime one to r prime t plus one different legend or different area and using these new partitions, you can compute RSS value again, right? And maybe you can observe, uh, you can find the best 
partition among all possible one more additional binary condition. Okay, so from the from the previous t minus one condition, you can just add one more partition condition, binary condition, and then using capital T condition, you can define this RSS function and you can check the quality of newly built tree based on previous tree. Okay. So maybe there are a bunch of different trees, but from this RSS value, you can choose the best one, the best one that minimize this RSS value. And the, the best RSS value definitely always less than or equal to the previous case RSS value. Okay. So you, you always improve the RSS value by adding one more condition in terms of training error. Okay. And in, in this process, you don't consider two step further scenario or three step further cases. Because this is too complicated to deal with. If you consider more further step, you can definitely do better. But that is very, very complicated step. So, just for simplicity, we just consider just one step further. So, one more condition, and then find the best one among the possible candidate, and compare the updated RSS value. But since we always observe better RSS value by adding one more condition. If you just look at this RSS value, you will always add one more condition every iteration. So in the end, you will have the condition as much as the number of data point and you will have a zero RSS value. Every area contains one single data point and you can predict the perfect output value using this process. But the most important thing is test error. And the small training error does not imply small test error. Why? Because of overfitting. So we have to consider some generalization property as well. Okay, so, so we have to define some stopping rule. We have to define some stopping criteria. So there are many options. One possible option is we can restrict the number of terminate, terminal node or number of in, uh, internal nodes, number of conditions, number of steps. So at the beginning, you declare, okay, I just want to have uh, 10 conditions. I, I just want to have five conditions. That's enough for me. Just declare this and just train the your tree in greedy manner, just five iterations or 10 iterations. And here the number of terminal load, number of internal load is kind of hyperparameters. So you can choose the best hyperparameter using cross validation step. Okay. The second approach is um, you can you can count the number of data point in each area re region. And if the num the data point in each region below some threshold, then stop. Because usually when the number of data point per each region uh, is very tiny, it is more likely to be overfitted. 
Okay, so just check the number of data points and define some stopping criterion with respect to the number of data points. The third one is like a rich regression or lasso method. Introduce some cost function and when we optimize the loss function plus cost function, we can naturally stop at some point. Okay. And one very natural uh, idea is for this case, add some additional cost that just consider the number of internal node or number of terminal node using some hyperparameter alpha. So when alpha is high, naturally this cost function restrict the size, strictly restrict the size. So you you might have very tiny depths very, with very tiny number of uh, terminal nodes. But on the other hand, if you set alpha close to zero, then this cost function is very uh, easy to uh, be ignored. So your depth becomes very deep and your tree will have bunch of condition and you will have many, many different region and terminal load and so on. Okay, so again, this is hyperparameter. You can choose the best hyperparameter using cross validation.